Hey guys, so just a quick announcement before we get into the video. I'd just like to say a massive thank you to all you guys that have subscribed, honestly. It means so much to us. It's actually amazing. Um, 100,000, I know that's not big when it comes to YouTube or whatever, but like, you know, it's really cool that there's so many of you guys that are interested in the same stuff that we're interested in. It really means a lot, honestly. Like, you know, for all you guys sharing the videos, commenting, coming back every day, it just, it, like, it's just, it's pretty overwhelming, if I be honest with you. It's just really cool, you know what I mean? So, uh, like, without that out of the way, you know, big thank you, all that jazz. I hope you guys enjoy the video. It's an old one, but it's a good one, you know? Shane the Shy, the most infuriating boss ever. Many games have recurring villains. Sometimes these are minor enemies that you enjoy fighting. Sometimes they are an incredibly powerful boss that tests you then lets you live for inscrutable reasons. And sometimes it's because they are very, very hard to kill. Shane was one of the latter sort, and he was the most infuriating and unsatisfying enemy I have ever fought, because he had just about the best survival trait an evil character can have. He wasn't invincible. He wasn't prescient. He didn't have some magical immortality. He didn't even have some sort of amazingly competent henchman. What Shane had was Cardus. You may complain about how the villain is monologuing too much, or he is too strong to fight, or how his behaviour makes no sense. But take it from me, it's far preferable to an enemy that just fucking runs away the second you get close. Yeah, this gets really out of hand. He, do he is he's very skilled at running away. Paranoia and Cardus are survival traits, and if the enemy survives, you didn't win. There's no second place in boss fights. We all laugh at the big guy chasing the small fast one around yelling fight fair. But it is just so goddamn infuriating when you're that guy. There's nothing quite as bad as getting within an inch of success than having it all just evaporate and start over again. We first encountered Shane when looking for some work as newbie adventurers. He hired us to look for some old record books in an abandoned and overrun garrison post. We went over, killed the local monsters, found the books, inspected them to make sure they weren't actually tombs of evil world ending magic. They weren't. Then turned them in and got paid. It was a perfectly normal low level fetch quest and between our other adventures he offered us more contracts almost exactly like it. We kept doing them. It was a good way to shake out new characters. Bringing Shane a steady supply of old record books, heirlooms and art pieces, until one day he said he was done and left the city. A few weeks later the entire nation devolved in civil war, centred around a bunch of dukes pushing the claim of a previously unknown heir to the kingdom. We fought in the war long enough to establish that both sides were utter assholes and that this sort of soldiering was a lot more likely to get us killed than get us rich. Then skipped off for a more stable country to hang out in. Now, we'd all been at this long enough to suspect that the documents and such that we had been gathering were the cause of the war. And a little research confirmed it. But we didn't put Shane down as anything but a procurer for the asshole jukes. He confirms this when we meet him again in the next country and offered us a job finding some magical objects while we get back on our feet. Since Shane had never screwed us on a job, we didn't really have anything against him personally. He made a pretty good case about just being a middleman, and assured us that there was no way that anything we were getting for him this time could be used to start a civil war. So we took the job. Once again we verified that we weren't fetching anything overly nefarious, then turned the stuff in and got paid. This time was just magical artefacts used for agriculture. Between bouts of serious questing, we kept doing these little fetch missions for agriculture artefacts until one day, Shane told us his contract was finished and he moved on again. When we came back from our mission to kill some evil wizard off in the boonies, we found the entire country suffering from a famine due to some sort of magical invasive plant species. We helped the locals hunt down a bunch of nutty druids who were using the artefact we find to help grow the plants and put Shane on our to-do list. We figured that two nation level disasters in a row were a bit much to put down to coincidence. Innocent middleman or not, Shane was not good for the general health of the world. 
So when we got to the next country and Shane once again offered us a job, we went to his new office planning to interrogate and kill him. Unfortunately, the second we started to get unpleasant, he hit a panic button, jumped out of the window (laughs) and ran faster away than any of us could follow. We tracked him to a mansion and made another attempt, except this time there were some pretty nasty evil goons to fight us. We fought our way through them to his rooms, where we expected some sort of monologue about his nefarious plans and a battle where he proved to be far more powerful than he looked. Instead, we found an open escape passage to the now empty stables. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but today's sponsor is brought to you by the Furry Hunter class! <laughs> it's a class dedicated to slaying the furry menace that infests the land of Nickbeardia. And yeah, if you haven't noticed, it's a party of Matt Mercer of Critical Role's Blood Hunter. It's a solid shit post put together by us and a few of the DMs on the West March server. It's a great way to help us, and for the low, low price of just one pound, it's hard to go wrong with the PDF. But enough of the Blood Hunter, let's get back to the video. We weren't able to track him this time, and anyway, he had some far more serious problems to deal with. But he was on the list. As soon as everything above him on the list was taken care of, we were going to go wreck his shit. And after a few sessions, it was. So we started looking. But it's really quite hard to find someone who knows he's being hunted, and isn't doing anything obviously nefarious. We could sort of track him by the chaos he caused. We got to the point where we just assumed that any plague, war, famine, magical disaster was caused by him. The problem was that he always left before anything went to shit, and nothing he did was obviously evil. Hell, all he did in one nation was start a gold rush. That's pretty, that's not bad, yeah. No one thinks of an enthusiastic prospecting firm as an evil doom cult. That is, until a red dragon shows up to take ownership of the newly wealthy nation. Uh, Yeah, (laughs) okay, I suppose. The problem following Shane around was that we usually wound up sorting out the current mess while he went and got started on the next. He was like the dickish in-game embodiment of a DM, (laughs) planning the next encounter while we took on the current one. Even when we sorted things out quickly, or occasionally just ignored them, and correctly guessed where he went next. The second he noticed us getting close, he would just abandon everything and change his identity. He'd also usually set up something nasty for us on the way out, like assassins or a nice framing. It was infuriating chasing him, and it was even worse when we got close. It's like, catch me if you can. Oh, it is actually... T- yeah, you know, I never thought uh, about that, I thought, yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio oh, and Tom Hanks. I haven't watched that movie in years. I'll need to watch it again. Literally, oh my god, I just looked at just like, I swear I didn't even see that yeah, picture. Uh, this is Megan's first time leading this one, so. We actually caught up with him a few times, but the bastard was paranoid as hell and always seemed to have one more escape route than we planned for. And he was retardedly fast and stealthy. After everything was over, we looked at his character sheet. The DM was keeping him leveled with us. And he was a multi-class character focused on nothing except running, hiding and using items. (laughs) The only things he used offensively were several ranks of knowledge and some diplomacy skills. Any single character in our group could have easily killed him if we could only catch him. But we couldn't. His complete abandonment of any offensive abilities meant that he was always sneakier and faster than us. Finally, to top it all off, Almost no one would believe us. Everyone thought we were a bit crazy. And, to be fair, some of us were. And didn't believe us when we insisted that everything that went wrong was the indirect result of Shane. We knew it was, though. No matter how many party members died and got replaced. The party as a whole always knew it was all Shane's fault. Sounds like yeah. fucking YouTube at the moment. Yeah, it does. It's all Shane Dawson's fault. It's all Shane, okay. So we chased him and had adventures, and chased him, and saved the world, and chased him, and chased him some more, until one day we got access to Time Stop. Time Stop. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But will it be that easy? Ooh. Even with Time Stop? Ooh. We had been waiting for this for a long time. We had planned for this day so hard it was incredible. Blah, blah, blah. In- <laughs> incredible! 
The war chest we had assembled just for killing Shane was enormous and we used it all. We hired thieves, we hired wizards, we bribed guards. We called in every divine favour we could. We even made deals with the evil doom cults that Shane might work for. The paladin was ready to fall. The warlock was ready to repent his sins and seek redemption. The bard was ready to swear off women and wine. <laughs> Whatever the hell it took to nail this slimy bastard to the wall. We tracked him down by waiting for the next disaster to strike. Then ignoring it. And watching all the nearby nations for low-level adventurers being hired to collect things or new businesses being open. We noticed a major city that had started building more flammable industrial buildings than usual and some adventurers collecting some weather control artefacts. We knew he was planning some sort of giant fire or something and didn't give a shit. All we cared about was making sure it took long enough for us to catch up to him. We had middlemen hire other middlemen to hire the best thieves to follow these adventurers and figure out where Shane worked, then where he lived. Once we knew that, we got the best casters we could to fill out his magical defences and help set us up to counter them when we went in. Sure, we could have just had everyone nuke the place to the ground, but we had to be certain he was dead and not just hiding through a portal or something. We were going to kill him where we could see it happen and make sure it was done right. We went in through one of the escape tunnels, while our hirelings covered every other exit or entrance we could find. We snuck up to the door to his room, blew it open and had our caster use Time Stop. Shane had almost finished reading his own scroll of Time Stop. I can't imagine the rage we would have felt if he had got off. (laughs) (laughs) If he had got his off first. I probably would have killed our DM. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Our wizard dumped every magical restraint he could on him and grabbed him for good measure. Then the rest of us came in through the door like El Presidente SWAT (laughs) team and dogpiled the little fucker. We stripped him of everything he wore, then scanned him for magic, then surgically removed a few things as... As he was carrying in... (laughs) That he was carrying inside of him. Healed him up and scanned again. Then hit him with an anti-magic field. Then scanned again. Removed the three things we'd missed off the first pass. Then hauled him out of there. We hauled him into a completely empty building outside of city. Only pausing to tell our minions to kill everyone inside. Stripped the place entirely. Then level whatever they couldn't take. And report to us at a location which we didn't plan to actually meet them at. Just in case they were followed. We used divine magic to make him tell the truth, then got his entire story. Along with the complete list of all his associates and the atrocities he had facilitated. Then when we made a contract with the strongest devil we could handle to keep him from ever communicating with anyone in the afterlife and to get him raped with spiky fucking dicks every (laughs) fucking second of all eternity and killed him. God, that felt good. <laughs> it feels good to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> then we went about dismantling everything he had ever done and wiping all records of him from existence. We didn't even leave a body to bury. We sure as hell didn't want some nutters worshipping him or trying to save him across time or something. We just wanted him gone. Forever. There was no aspect of him which we thought should be remembered. Nothing about him justified. Ever. Ever. Mentioning him again. We deleted that fucker. Made him an unperson. He didn't even have a good excuse for all the damage he caused. He was just a rich, bored sociopath. It's not like he had an evil divine mission or something. He just woke up one day and decided to dedicate his life to being a complete and utter dick to everyone. (laughs) He wanted to make as much overall suffering as possible. And decided the best way to do that was to sit there and help every little doom cult or wannabe evil overlord or rebellious noble carry out their stupid plans. He never personally killed anyone, he just arranged things. He was such a complete and utter tool that it took all the fun out of fighting him and almost took all the fun out of killing him. Almost. Almost. After we went full Inquisition on Shane, we weren't exactly popular. No one had believed what we said about the guy before. 
and now that he was dead, we weren't going to bother trying to convince them. We just left and started hunting down every single name we got from Shane, and fixing everything he had started setting up but hadn't finished. After we got rid of the last dread overlord that Shane had helped set up, and the list was empty, we all retired and handed control of the party over to the apprentices that had helped us clean up the last of the messes. Things generally got better for the world. There was still shitty stuff going on, but it wasn't quite as bad as it used to be. That's a really nice anthem. I yeah, like I like it. Yeah, honestly, I miss Shoggy's writing. Yeah. It feels like so long since I've read any of his stuff. To be honest, this is the first time I've actually read anything of Shoggy's. No, you ha- No, you did. You did Shoggy the Southern Dog, but the audio got... But the audio got deleted, I yes. I was going to do that. And it was a really good one. We do actually need to go back and do Shoggy the Southern Dog. Because yeah. It's such a, such a story. But this one... I this think is quite good. It is very good. It's and very love- good. It makes a big bad evil guy actually like it's a really good example yeah. of a big bad evil guy. Yeah. You know? I can see Shoggy really has a fondness for the word nefarious. <laughs> yeah, well, look, she's a very nefarious individual. <laughs> so it's okay, you know, but I But really, it's a really I, good story. He's a really good author. He is, you can tell he's a good author. Um sadly it's been a year since his last one he's written, but he does yeah. a lot of um Warhammer to the War videos, so if you guys are interested, go ahead and check out his stuff. You yeah, know. I'll link, link his, his video videos down, down below. below. It's definitely worth checking out because he does spend an awful lot of time. But uh, no, I want to ask you guys tell us about your big battle evil guys. Yeah, what's like your, the favorite one that yeah, you've had, what, or even like the worst one that's really like grinded your fucking dick? Yeah, like tell us about him, and we might make a video on. I think it would be a fun. Yeah, video. I think that'll be a fun video because I love to hear the differences about big bad evil guys and, yeah, pe- and other people's campaigns. Because normally you get that everyone knows everyone, the lich, yeah, the lich or the beholder or, or the big monster yeah, or something like, or, or the lich. Yeah. There's always a fucking lich. Always, <laughs> people like liches, you know, yeah. people love the undead. But like I really enjoyed this one and it was definitely worth going back to do it again. Um like for all you guys that are gonna leave in the comment, I think I've heard this one. Why are you doing it again? It's like good because I love it. Okay, it's a good story, and it was in the text to speech two years and I wanted to read it. Yeah. So <laughs> So I thought it was worth doing. But like as always guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as we did. Uh we're really close to hundred thousand mark. Really it's fucking really close, close, really fucking. Uh, but look, that's enough. We've spoken enough for this video, I think. Uh so we'll love you and leave you, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. See you in See the next one. Bye. All those moments lost in time.